Okay, so here we have our HP Aruba 2530-24G network switch. It's a 1 gig, uh, 24 port with 4 SFP modules. I've just purchased this for an absolute bargain price and the fan that's in there, the stock fan, is just a little bit too loud for my liking. So we're going to have a look at switching that out for a Noctua fan. So in comparison to most of the switches, this particular one, the 2530, is very very quiet and if you compare it with a 2930 or something like that, it's much much quieter. Um, but I want to see if I can get it any quieter by swapping out the stock fan. Um, so the next thing to do is to open it up and see what we can do inside. Okay, so we've finally managed to get this switch open and we can take a look inside. Uh, top left we've got our power supply and the power connector that goes external to the chassis. Uh, and then we've got our main sort of circuit board with the heat sinks and the switching A6 underneath those. And then we can see our 40mm fan, uh, the stock fan and its 4 pin connector. Um, we need to note that it is a 4 pin connector and also that it is a 12 volt fan so we need to make sure that we buy a 12 volt replacement and not a 5 volt fan because some switches do use 5 volt fans So this is our NFA4X20 Noctua fan that we're going to be putting into this switch. This is the 40mm one and it is 12 volts. We've got to make sure we get the right one because there's about four different versions of this. Um, so as you can see as we open it up, it comes very well packaged as most Noctua products do and with plenty of very very useful accessories. Uh, so we've got the fan itself is the 20 mil deep version and the 4 pin PWM connector not the 3 pin version we've got some anti-vibration mounts and we've also got the usual selection of wire cables, splitters and low noise adapters as well which are always really handy to have um, we've also got in there a kit that allows us to use um, connect it to a, a different fan header if it's not a non-standard four pin header or something like that we can use the included kit to connect it to that but we're not going to be using that today but again very useful to have so we're going to start by removing the old fan it's only held in by two two small screws at the bottom and then we can remove that completely once we've taken the screws out so there are slight differences between these two and as you can see the uh, the actual connector is obviously slightly different. But we can modify that and it's not going to cause us any issues. So in order to adapt this, uh, all we need is a little pair of side cutters. And we're just going to take the Noctua header and just cut that piece off. simple and straightforward and it works perfectly as you can see I won't get in the way anymore 
So all we're going to do then is connect it up to the switch. So here we're just going to check that the fan is blowing the correct way. So you can see the little arrow on the top. We just need to make sure that that is pointing inwards towards the switch, which is blowing the air in and across the heat sinks. So we are going to mount this using the included anti-vibration mounts, taking into account I haven't actually used these before. Um, let me just push through as such. Need to make sure that the fan is oriented correctly before we start this. Right, so that's the first one in. And then the second one, it's only held in at the bottom, there's nothing at the top that holds it in. And that can just be pulled through as such. And then we can just pull these through the screw holes. It is a very tight fit as these screw holes are actually slightly smaller than uh, standard standard fans. Um, so it'll take a bit of pulling but they will eventually go through. And then once we've got those through we can just use our cutters again to remove the excess from the back and from the front. Now this isn't mounted in the most secure way ever, but once the top cover of the switch is back on, it's going to be absolutely no issue. It's certainly not going to uh, going to be falling out or anything like that. We've took the wire away, and we're happy with that. We are going to power on the switch, and hopefully it will all work. There we are, the fan is spinning. And we'll just wait for it to boot up and make sure that we don't get any error lights on the front. So that's now in the process of booting. And that is now booted and with no orange lights, which is a good sign. We don't have the fault light and we don't have the little fan light illuminated, so that's good and it looks like that has been a success. Uh, all we need to do now is stick the case back on and plug it into our computer and test it. it's actually working properly. So we've now logged into the web interface of the switch through its IP address as you can see on the screen now. Uh, we've got some previous fan fail uh, notifications but that's only because I've been unplugging it and plugging it back in previously. But as you can see at the top it says fan 1 is now operating normally. So, success. Um, the switch is currently sat right next to me and I can't hear it at all. So I hope that was useful and thanks for watching.